The US and the EU have condemned the arrest of Tunisia's opposition leader. Rashid Ghanouchi now sits behind bars. But President Kais Said says the decision was made by honest judges. The move comes amid growing tension in the country, with many asking if democracy in Tunisia is being destroyed. I'm Yashni Padiachi, and today's newsmaker is Tunisia. Opposition leader Rashid Ghanouchi is being detained in Tunisia on charges of plotting against state security. The head of the Another Party is now one of more than 20 people openly opposed to President Kai Said's rule that have been arrested since February. He was detained following an investigation by the judge that lasted eight hours. No date has been set for any trial or the next hearing. Hanouchi was the Speaker of the elected Parliament before Said dissolved the chamber in July 2021. It was a power grab that allowed him to rule by decree. Since Said's seizure of broad powers, which the President says was needed to save the country from years of crisis, Hanouchi has been the biggest political party leader to oppose him. The EU says they are following developments in Tunisia with concern, while the US has also condemned the move, as has the Another Party. The arrest of Rashid Ghanouchi today is an intensification of the policy of abuse and targeting of political opponents. And this is one of the many stages that preceded it, including targeting activists and politicians. Now dozens of them have been arrested and are in prison pending unknown cases, unsubstantiated accusations and facts that no one knows. The terrorism law, in which principle applies to terrorists, is applied by Kais Said and his authority on politicians in clear violation of their rights as political detainees. Joining me now from London is Yusra Ghanouchi, the daughter of the jailed opposition leader Rashid Ghanouchi. Yusra, I really appreciate you speaking to us. I know this is a very difficult time for your family. If Thank you could you. just tell us what happened on the 17th of April, the night your father was arrested. Yes, uh, a week ago, uh, on Monday, 17th of April, uh, just before the time of breaking the fast, the uh, Muslim fast uh, during the month of Ramadan, uh, a huge number of police security officers, uh, around 100, uh, arrived at my parents' house in Tunis, uh, half of whom entered the house and started searching throughout the rooms and my parents' uh, belongings uh, in the presence of my uh, father, my mother, and my sister and her two young daughters. Uh, they took uh, a number of my father's personal papers, his personal diaries, his personal electronics, his phone and uh, computer, and took my father away after this extended two-hour search of the house. Um, they took him to uh, the military barracks of Lawina, uh, uh, where they kept him for 48 hours without contact with his lawyers or family after which they began uh, the interrogation for the uh, uh, ridiculous uh, fabricated charges of uh, inciting uh, civil war. Um, uh, during the hearing, uh, lawyers demonstrated, proved uh, conclusively that the statements had been distorted by the prosecution who presented a doctored version of the video to claim that my father uh, had uh, made uh, such a call, whereas he was talking uh, at the headquarters of the National Salvation Front uh, to commend the work of the front in bringing together uh, Tunisian parties and intellectuals and civil society organizations from uh, various backgrounds and intellectual and political and ideological uh, backgrounds to oppose uh, the coup and pull back for democracy. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, so this is the exact opposite of, of what has been claimed. After that, the judge, uh, despite uh, the lawyer's uh, pleading, uh, he charged my father with the uh, very serious charge of conspiring against state security and sent him to prison pending trial. Uh, this could go on for, you know, up to uh, 14 months. It's a very serious charge that could carry the death penalty. Uh, uh, and this is something, obviously, that uh, we condemn and we are uh, very worried uh, about my father's situation. 
Yusra, since his arrest, have you been able to speak to him? He is 81 years old. I do understand that he has a medical condition. How is he holding up? Uh, my uh, par my mother and sister have not been able to see my father yet. Uh, they uh, tried today to visit him, but because of the uh, uh, unreasonable uh, visiting conditions that were uh, placed, my father refused uh, the visit. And he uh, plans to announce going on a hunger strike to protest at uh, this unfair arbitrary uh, arrest and to demand his release and that of all political prisoners in Tunisia. Well, we've seen the erosion of Tunisia's democracy for several years now. What do you expect to happen in the coming months from Kai Saeed's government? Do you think there could possibly be a complete banning of all opposition parties? Indeed, uh, Kai Saeed has began since July 2021 to dismantle Tunisia's uh, hard-won gains and freedoms and democratic institutions one after the other from parliament to the constitution to the uh, higher independent judicial council the higher electoral commission uh, and he is uh, continuing despite widespread opposition despite his dwindling uh, uh, his support base as demonstrated by the fact that only 10 percent took part in his so-called elections he is determined to continue to uh, consolidate his uh, one-man authoritarian rule. Uh, uh, however, the opposition are also determined to, to, to put an end to this, and that's why they have been uh, working to build a diverse and broad uh, opposition front, which is why uh, Khay Saeed has uh, tried to disrupt these efforts by, uh, by, by persecuting, by arresting uh, the opposition. There, there are more than 20 other uh, politicians and judges, journalists who are being tried for the same charge of conspiring against state security uh, as my father. Uh, and this is something that everyone who believes in democracy and the rule of law mm -hmm. around the world should uh, condemn clearly and, and demand uh, you know, an end to this uh, persecution of the opposition and dismantling of Tunisia's mm -hmm. democracy. Yusra, what's your message to your fellow Tunisians and to anyone watching what's happening in the country, especially the international community? Uh, Tunisia's democratic transition has not been easy. Uh, Tunisians' aspirations to prosperity and stability may not all uh, have been realized. But what Qaytaye is doing now is not solving Tunisia's uh, problem. It's not helping the economy. Uh, the economy is uh, facing collapse and near bankruptcy. Uh, and uh, what Faisal Saeed is doing is establishing his own uh, utopian uh, rule without any concern for Tunisia's immediate uh, problems. Uh, what Tunisia needs now is, is for everyone to come together to stand against this coup, to demand a return to democracy, uh, so that uh, we can return to facing uh, the real challenges uh, and problems that, that Tunisians uh, need us to address. Time will tell if that will happen. Yusra Ganucci, appreciate your time and speaking to us here on The Newsmakers. Thank you so much. Well, let's broaden this discussion now and bring in our new guests. I'm joined from Doha by Larbi Sadiki. He's a professor of international relations at Qatar University and a senior fellow at the Middle East Council of Global Affairs in Doha. And we have Ridwan Masmoudi in Washington, D.C. He's a member of the Ahmadiyya Party and the president of the Center for the Study of Islam and Democracy. To both of you, welcome to the Newsmakers. We appreciate you speaking to us. Professor Siddiqui, I'm going to start with you. Tunisia was once hailed as the great success story of the Arab Spring, possibly the only one. Now it's a country that appears to be slowly sliding into autocracy. What went wrong? Um, <clears throat> I think really it's, it's good here to uh, begin with a caveat. Uh, the caveat I have in mind is like for, for people and for students of democracy and democratization, to actually look back on the democratization processes that have uh, evolved for 40, 50 years. And democratization can be messy. 
Remember, Tunisia had a revolution, a promising revolution in 2011, and had, uh, let's say, some kind of breakdowns, reverses, the worst of which, uh, of course, you know, is the latest in uh, 2021. The, uh, these reverses uh, must be, I guess, really seen within the time span of this transition. Basically, 10 years is a footnote in the history of any country aspiring to democratize. We don't expect democratization to be smooth, to be single, to be fixed, to be linear. And this is exactly like you know, the point that we have you know, to stress when we talk about democratization. So we should not actually relegate Tunisia to uh, a sphere of exceptionalism that, you know, remember, like there's two types of exceptionalism. Are that Tunisia is the model you know, Arab Spring country that is on the verge of a, uh, br um, a breakthrough uh, to transcend the threshold of democracy and democratization, or on the other side, uh, this is a failing uh, democracy democratization. I think it's too early to kill Tunisia's democratization. I think Tunisia uh, has got a remarkable people, has got like remarkable elites, has got a repertoire of struggles and uh, protest revolutionary uh, people, lots of them today are detained, um, 30 of them. Um, and I think there is hope you know, for Tunisia despite the breakdown. So breakdowns, democratic breakdowns, are not exceptional. Uh, Tunisia might be, as we said, like the quintessential example of a spring, uh, Arab spring uh, story that went wrong. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, we should not actually lo lose hope despite the reverses and the mm -hmm. uh, breakdowns. Uh, Rodwan, let me bring you in here because as a member of that main opposition uh, party, you've seen the leader now being uh, jailed and this continued crackdown on the opposition from Kai's side. Do you think that is going to provoke an uprising from the Tunisian people? Well, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, Kai Saeed is uh, a threat not only to democracy because he has been dismantling the democratic institutions, the political parties, the civil society organizations, even the UGTT, the labor union in Tunisia, which was uh, previously very strong, now is very weak, cannot hold meetings, cannot organize uh, uh, any kind of, uh, of um, uh, you know, opposition to the government. So I think that uh, democracy uh, in Tunisia certainly was flawed before the coup of uh, 2021. It, did, it was not a perfect democracy, it was still work in progress. But Qais Saeed has been de dismantling that democracy for now almost two years, more than a year and a half. He has been uh, destroying all the institutions. He has been arresting anybody who criticizes him uh, in Tunisia, the main political parties, even journalists, lawyers, uh, bloggers, have been jailed and have been sent to jail. So um, I, I disagree with my friend, you know, Professor Siddiqui, that, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, things are not uh, all lost. If, if ISIS Ayyid continues his policies that he's been doing for another six months or another year, uh, I don't think we can have any hope of um, uh, rescuing democracy. I think democracy is really in danger. In Tunisia, I think that Qais Saeed is a populist who wants to reinstate one-man rule, and he has been for two years now destroying all the institutions mm -hmm. of democracy that have been built for the last 10 years. And even before that, you know, civil society in Tunisia is older than the revolution, but even civil society right now is struggling, is struggling mm -hmm. to survive under the new conditions that Qais Saeed is imposing uh, on Tunisian society. Professor Siddiqui, how much support does Qais Saeed actually have? He did win an election. Those who do support him, what are their reasons for backing someone who does appear to be reversing a lot of the democratic gains the country has seen? Look, um, I mean, there are two narratives. You can say Qais Saeed basically won a presidential mandate with, uh, by the way, with the, with the help of, of Nahda. And Nahda actually uh, mediated the success, the presidential success of Qais Saeed. Okay. So really if we are to get into the nitty gritty of why we have like you know, this paralysis, this reverse, uh, democratic reverse, this breakdown, then really we have to look at this sclerosis 
you know, of the system. And another has been, you know, part of, of that problem. Another, Tayyar Demokrati, Al Jumhuri, UGTT, none of them basically helped, you know, the cause of the Tunisian people. That is like, especially the social question, you know, if, if we are to uh, invoke uh, Hannah Arendt, the social question, and in, in, in uh, I guess, really the human condition, the Tunisian uh, human condition, is the social question inherent in the human condition, you know, of uh, Tunisians? I think um, if you look at the latest, the latest elections, and Yusra, when she spoke earlier, she was correct, like he had like 10% um, uh, voter uh, uh, turnout. And I think that is really indicative of the uh, dwindling support, you know, for high society. He's populist. Uh, Dr. Masmoudi is correct. He's been dismantling, you know, the infrastructure of a promising um, uh, democratic uh, system. Uh, he actually got rid of a promising and democratic uh, constitution. But I think really we need also to lay the blame equally distributed equally. Mm -hmm. I think the political elites have also failed, you know, the people. And Tunisia is today on the cusp of a populist, um, uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. let's say, wave. People basically have been, um, let's say, withdrawing support, even from Ghanoushi himself, even from Inahda, even from the UGTT, because the social question has been absent in any, uh, let's say, modest operandi of how to go about, yeah. let's say, uh, delivering the goods of the Tunisian revolution. Because you raise the expectations, uh, you promise lots of, of, of goods, and none of them have been delivered. And I think that is very, very uh, problematic. That is the case of, of many governments around the world and politicians that do want to come into power, is to make all these promises and often not deliver. Uh, Rodwan, would you like to respond uh, to what the professors just uh, said there? Because uh, some may say that Enada does have uh, something to answer for, considering they did support uh, Kai Said in 2019 in that election. No, of course, Anahda does uh, have some share of, of the responsibility of uh, uh, the failures, let's say, of the democratic transition in the last uh, 10 years, and even of electing uh, Qais Saeed in 2019. Um, but as he, uh, Professor Sadiq himself said, democratic transitions are very difficult, and they take a long time, and we do not yet have a fully functioning democracy. We were in the process of building a democracy. Qais Saeed came in as an outsider, as a, uh, an assistant professor of constitutional law who was independent, and he claimed that he was going to find uh, corruption and unite all Tunisians. And that's why he won 70% of the votes, not just another voted for him, almost everybody voted for him uh, with, the, with those promises. But then it was based on the constitution of 2014 that we elected him. So it was based on his promise to respect the constitution of 2014 and to work within the, the, the political system of the democratic political system that was uh, being established in Tunisia. But immediately after he was elected, he started turning against the, that political system. He started blocking every attempt that the government was trying to make or the parliament was trying to make to solve Tunisia's problems. Let's not remember, uh, let's not forget, he's been president for three years now. And he has not solved a single problem that Tunisia has, whether economically, politically, socially, in every aspect of life. Things have been getting worse. Mm -hmm. So democracy, as we had it before the coup, was, not, was flawed. I agree. You know, it had many problems. But we don't solve the problems of democracy by going to dictatorship. We solve the problems of democracy with more democracy, with with improving the democratic uh, institutions and strengthening the democratic uh, institutions. Well, Redwan, how do you go about doing that now in a country where the, the leader is suppressing uh, all of that? Because is it going to be the political oppression that gets people onto the streets to protest? Or is it going to be the fact that this is a country that has growing economic stability and thousands of young people trying to escape most of the time uh, across the sea to Europe? I think it will be a combination of both. I think it will be that the Tunisians are starting to realize that uh, ISIS Ayyad 
is has no solutions. Like that Qais Sayyid is making life very difficult for all Tunisians, is making things much worse. We all agree they were not perfect, they were not great before the coup of uh, 2021 by, by Qais Sayyid. But he has no solutions. He has make he 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 only gives populist speeches every day or every couple of days. He he insults the uh, the opposition. He insults anybody who criticizes him uh, and and accuses them of treason and and uh, the, trying to destroy the state as if he is the state. You know that's that's the sign of dictatorship. They think that a dictator thinks that he is the state and anybody who criticizes him uh, is against the state. But I think the Tunisians are starting to realize that this man is a danger to Tunisia, not only to Tunisia's democracy, which he has been dismantling, but to Tunisia as a country, to, to, to the Tunisian state, to the Tunisian economy, to our relations with the world. He has been destroying our relations with the entire world, with his populist speeches and, and populist, uh, you know, um, uh, outcries against the entire world, against interference, even even mild criticism from the European Union or the United States or the United Nations or even the African Union when they criticize them about about uh, lack of human rights. Oh, he says no, no, no. This is interference in our uh, international, our, in our domestic affairs. Um, so. He uh, is destroying the country. My fear is not only for democracy right now. My fear is for Tunisia. And I appeal to the European Union. I appeal to the international community to really uh, do more to, to help protect Tunisia as a country, first of all, and as a democracy. Mm -hmm. and, and I think they go both hand in hand. But the United States and the European Union have not done enough to, to, uh, to protect or to support democracy. In, in Tunisia. Professor Siddiqui, is the international community, have they done enough to help Tunisia to condemn uh, the autocracy in that country or are governments in Europe, for example, right now too focused on containing the mass migration that's coming from Tunisia and North Africa? I disagree with uh, Dr. Basmoudi in the sense that he, uh, of course, like I'm not, um, it's, it's good to have uh, diverse opinions here. I think demoting the agency of the Tunisian people who have creatively um, basically uh, brought a revolution not just to Tunisia but also to the region, I think is really uh, or, or verges on uh, political defeatism. Tunisians are capable of rebuilding their own democracy and they don't really need the Americans. Why? The Americans went to Iraq 20 years ago to bring democracy. And we know actually what happened in Iraq. Uh, the Americans support uh, Sisi's regime. We remember Rabah. We remember what happened, the killings. There's always basically uh, uh, oppression in the region that the Americans turn a blind eye to. Uh, so really, uh, I think you are spot on when you, when you talk about migration, about security. The narrative of how uh, to, to deal with the uh, breakdown, the democratic breakdown in Tunisia, has been widely and largely uh, securitized. And I think that is really a big problem. I think really we have you know, to rethink you know, this uh, panacea that the Americans actually you know, are prophets of democracy in the region. America, which at the moment has okay. got itself problems of democracy. Mm -hmm. America has got actually its own populism, and it's got actually on its hand a bigger fish to fry, which is actually the Russian-Ukrainian war. So they don't really care about Tunisia. And Tunisia is not geostrategically mm -hmm. an important country, actually, you know, for the Americans. So I think if I am to bet like my money, I would bet actually on the Tunisian people rebuilding their democracy. I, I, I need to say this. Mm -hmm. Said is a dictator, but he's not really a sophisticated dictator, you know. Uh, you know and one would and, say and that a dictator was... is a dictator because it's, at the end of yeah, the day, it's dictator. the people of no, Tunisia who are, are suffering. Dictators. No, the, there are dictators who are really, really like they have sophistication, they have ideas, they have intellectuals. This one does not have really anyone. This one has actually mm -hmm. made Ghanoushi and Inahda at the moment like very popular, you know. Uh, you know, Sheikh Rashid should be released and all of the 30 detainees should be released. It's not about Sheikh Rashid and mm -hmm. Qais Saeed. But Qais Saeed is not really an intelligent dictator. 
you know, Sheikh yeah. Rashid today is far more, I guess, really popular than actually uh, two weeks ago. I mean, I, I agree that um, the, the task of building a democracy in Tunisia lies primarily with the Tunisian people. There is no question about that. It is the function and the role of the Tunisian people, civil society, political parties, all of that, to work hard to build their democracy and to rebuild their democracy. But uh, they also need support from the international community uh, because there is no intelligent dictator. All dictators are not intelligent. If they were intelligent, they wouldn't be a dictator in the first place. And dictators are, can become ruthless, can, can kill people, can shoot people, can arrest people, and especially if they have the backing of the military. As Qais Sa'id seems to enjoy right now, he, has, he seems to enjoy the backing of the military. So the Tunisian people are also scared <laughs> because this is the first time that the military in Tunisia gets involved in politics. And I think that it's true. The United States in the That's past not have, not, that is not true, have, right? not, have not supported democracy in Tunisia or in the Arab world. That is true. But I'm hoping that will change because the policies of the United States, the policies of the European Union are leading the mm -hmm. entire Arab world to disaster, to catastrophe. Look what's happening across the Middle East, across mm -hmm. North Africa. It's, it's a disaster. We're going to have to leave uh, this fascinating uh, discussion. But thank you both for joining us, Professor Larbi Sadiqi and Ridwan Masmoudi in Washington, D.C. It's been great to get your expertise and analysis. And thank you for watching. You can follow us on Twitter and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Yashni Padiachi. See you next time.